Technology is vital to make your Solaris Empire grow and thrive. Almost two years ago, I made a video showing exactly how you can get as much tech as possible. But since then, so much has changed, including the newest update, 3.11, which has drastically nerfed and changed tech. In this video, I'll be showing you every way you can get tech, starting at the basics for beginners and moving to more advanced techniques, which even the more advanced players could have missed. I guarantee you will learn at least one thing from this video, and if not, I'll cry on your behalf. This is the third and last video where I'm doing a post commentary style because I messed up my audio settings and it made your ears bleed. So sometimes my webcam won't be synced with what I'm saying, but it's fine. After this, we'll be using these crisp new audio settings. Now, let's get back to tech. In this video, I'll be suggesting ways to increase your research speed and output. These are not the same thing, but what do they mean? and is one better than the other. Well, the main tech number you see is research output. These are separated into three classes, physics, engineering, and society. These are typically earned from jobs or research stations. This is the base resource that we use to get techs. On the other hand, research speed represents our expertise in a particular research class, resulting in shorter research times. But what does this mean? So we have 17.29 physics output. This is then increased by 70%, so we're making 20.23 progress a month to the physics research. Once we get the total 1950 tech, we will get the tech. That's how this system works. Techs have different costs and you want to fill them up to get the tech. So which one should you increase, speed or output? To be honest, increasing both is ideal. Why would you not want to increase one of them? However, you're way more in control of raw output because it's linked to your buildings and your planet. But if you get the option to increase research speed, go for it. And I'll be showing you different ways that you can increase it, which isn't completely obvious. Before we jump into any tips about the game, you're going to be greeted with settings. Tech cost is the first thing that you'll see. Techs all have a tech cost. The game is balanced around one times. So if a base tech is 4,000, it'll cost 4,000 at one times, but then 2,000 at 0.5 or 8,000 at two times. Both videos I play at half tech cost, that's because I want a quicker game. Due to how much I record, this changes the tech cost for everyone in the game, so it's not like I'm getting advantage over the AIs. You can change this to how fast you want the game to go. If you want a longer game, you can increase the tech cost. Do what you find is fun, it's a single player game, so go wild. Something added in 3.11 was difficulty adjusted tech cost. The default is normal. This means if you play at Grand Admiral, for example, the tech costs at higher tier technologies are going to be much higher than if you played on the lowest difficulty which is civilian so as the game goes on the techs are going to exponentially get more expensive i'm not 100 sure if it applies to ais but i believe it does you can adjust this to your liking if you want a small increase in the higher tier techs you can put it to low and if you just don't want this change you can turn it to off and this will be pre 3.11 changes i personally like normal because i believe that you could speed through the late game tech now you actually need to still pay attention later on to your technologies so if you're new to the game you might be wondering where do you build science well, you might see in most of my videos if you've watched for a while, I cram as much science in my capital as possible. This is because the Empire Capital designation for your capital is the only designation that can give bonus resources to jobs, barring a couple of caveats that we'll get onto later. As you can see here, the designation gives stability, amenities, governing ethic, traction, resettlement chance, and then resources from jobs 10%, which looking through the buffs, we can see Empire Capital plus 10%. You might be screaming at your screen saying there's a tech world designation for other planets. That is true, but all it does is reduce researcher upkeep, which isn't awful in its own because then you don't have to spend as many consumer goods, but when you're going for the most output, the Empire Capital wins. As you can see from other designations, you can get more output like the Energy District, but Alloy designation and consumer goods don't actually give more output, they just reduce upkeep, which is why I sometimes make my capital alloys and science so you can get as much output as possible from these two jobs. This has slightly changed with the adaptability tradition, as when we finish it, we get increased colonial designation bonuses. So once we finish adaptability, we come over to the tech world, we're actually now getting plus 5% researcher output. This does apply to your capital, so you've gone from 10 to 15%, but it's something to know. These stats also go up if you upgrade your ascension on your planets, but this is usually used later on because it costs a lot of unity. So then you're going to want to stack these worlds as much as you can with science. You don't want to make a world that does everything. Specializing is the key. Don't worry too much about stability. If you're over 50%, you gain resources from jobs. And if you're below, you lose resources from jobs. But increasing your stability to 100 isn't as good as just building more science as these percentages don't make up for the raw output. The best way of increasing your stability is just building a holo theater and working one of the jobs. They give loads of amenities, 
to keep your pops happy and above 50% stability. And on this planet, it's the only source of my amenities and we're perfectly fine. So you might remember me saying that there was a caveat to the research designation, and that is on habitats and ring worlds. On habitats, we do get more research output as well as on ring worlds. So if you get one of these, this could be a great science world. So you've listened to me and you've spam science everywhere and now your consumer goods are not looking too good. That's because researchers do have a hefty consumer good upkeep. This is heightened because of the 3.11 update. A lot of bonuses to science now come with a negative of consumer good upkeep. So you're going to really need to find ways to get more consumer goods. To counter this, you can just make a consumer good world where you just pump as much consumer goods as possible. You could even make your capital a factory world and lose a little bit out on science, but you're gaining more science because you can work more science jobs. Or you can come over to government, policy and edicts, then go to economic policy and put on civilian economy. This will give you more consumer goods, but you'll make less alloys. But if you're tech rushing and you're not needing alloys, this could be a great fix to your deficit and economy. Now, the great thing about machines is that their upkeep is energy. So you don't even have to worry about consumer goods. Just make sure you have a lot of energy. And hive minds have the issue with minerals. So make sure you have minerals. So let's look at traditions. Discovery is the obvious science-based tradition. When we finish, we'll get 10% more research speed, which is pretty nice. We'll also get the Researcher Cooperative Federation type, which we'll get into later. In this tree, we'll also get an edict called Research Subsidies, which we'll get into in a bit. More research station outputs, we'll get more research alternatives, more XP gain and level, and then Researcher Upkeep Reduction, which is quite huge when you have a lot of scientists. Research subsidies is also pretty nice if you really want a bit more tech. It gives you 10% more research output and it will cost you one energy per researcher. Something interesting that wasn't actually changed in 3.11, which is how anomalies and situations work. Anomalies and situations peck wasn't scaled up, so the cost of situations remains the same, which means you can actually finish situations quicker now in the game compared to techs. So if they give you some bonus science, it might be worth trying to finish them as soon as you can. The science gained from anomalies, however, though, is linked to your research output. So the more science you have, the more the bonus from completing the anomalies will give you. So it might be worth waiting a bit for those until you reach close to your peak science production. To finish these projects and anomalies, it may be worth pairing your scientists with traits they're good at. For example, Bruce here, he's an archaeologist. Make him do the dig sites. Whereas there's an anomaly discovery chance here, which means when they're serving, they have a more likely chance to find anomalies, which could give you more science, so make them survey. So our beloved assist research has been murdered. I love just using a science ship to assist research, but that's their boomer in me speaking. Instead, now any leader can be assigned to govern any planet. You still want to be careful as officials buff up the basic advanced and strategic resources from jobs. And remember, these bonuses are per level, so we have a level four leader. So on this planet, we are getting 8% more resources. And as you might have noticed, it doesn't include science production. However, you can put a scientist on a world like we've done on our tech world here. And because they're assigned to the planet and not the sector capital, it's only applying to this planet, but we're getting 2% per level, this is a level five scientist, so we're getting 10% more science. Because they have a scientist on this planet, they aren't getting the sector bonuses from our official. We've also got this leader analyst, which gives 10% to the planet on production of science. You get the veteran class at level four. And if you're planning to do this on a planet, highly recommend to go with the analyst trait. This is only if you have paragons. I think it's randomly chosen if you don't have the DLC. So that means that we're getting 20% from total from this leader to science production on the planet, which is very nice. The reason I haven't put him on the capital though, even though we have science on our capital, is because we really need the resources from the official. I'd highly recommend, no matter what, putting a scientist on a tech world that's not the sector capital, and then weighing up if you can afford to put it on the sector capital. The next tip is about leaders and the council. This is another new change, but it's highly important. As you can see here, we're 61 years in, but there's a lot going on. Spark of Genius on the council is just insane. It gives 3% at level one and then 6% research speed at level two. These add up and you can have them 
on any science position in the council. As you can see here, we're stacking all of these traits to get 91% in total, and Spark of Genius is helping add up. This 91% is almost doubling our tech output, which is no small feat. Also, you might get Statistician when they level up to the Veteran class at level 4. This gives 5% research speed if they're on the council. Highly recommend if you have a counselor. And you might be seeing this Creator Archivist position. We'll be talking about that later on, so stick around. Also, I forgot to mention, but Cyborg trait also gives governors extra science on that planet. So this leader is actually giving 30% total to that planet. And remember that you can actually choose your leader's traits by coming over to ruler traits then going over to scientists and selecting spark of genius level one which will give you three percent research speed and when they level up they should get the option to level that trait up to get six percent research speed i pretty much always do this i also like to take an extra science trait these give 15 percent, but only to one category of science i like taking natural engineer because it's military techs so you can get bigger ships and then outscale other people quicker to balance this out you're going to need some big negative traits I like non-adaptive now, the minus 10% habitability is better than the unruly Empire Sprawl gain. Maybe if you're not warring much, psychological infertility and solidarity is a solid minus one. You can also look at your recruitable leaders to see if you get another spark of genius to then put on the head of research. We didn't in this case, but it's always worth checking. Remember that your head of research also gets research speed per skill level just for sitting in that position. So you want to make that scientist as high level as you can, whether that be through doing anomalies, excavations or even sitting on a planet. Something that's changed recently is the Research Institute. It used to give a boost to science production on that planet but now you can only build one in your empire and instead it gives plus five percent research speed flat, an extra scientist capacity and a science or extra job which produces some more science. I have built it on my capital here as I only had three worlds. It might be worth just building it on a spare building slot elsewhere as you only get one science job, whereas a max research lab could give six science jobs. Another way to get research speed is via materialist. The base ethic gives you 5% research speed and fanatic gives you plus 10%. Egalitarian also gives specialist output bonuses and scientists are specialists. So if there's anything that gives more specialist output, make sure to grab it because it will apply to your scientists. There is something else materialist unlocks. To see this, you have to go over to species then click on one of your population, then click set rights, and then living standards. And materials unlocks academic privilege. This gives rulers and specialists more happiness and pops that produce science 10% more research points. This does come at a cost of more consumer goods for rulers, specialists, and workers. So you need to make sure that your consumer goods are all good. The next tip is surprisingly about mercenary enclaves. These can be a great source of just some raw science as when they pay dividends they can just give you some research as you can see here. As you can see from all these tips we're just getting five, three, ten percent more bonuses but adding all of them can add up to insane numbers. If you're truly trying to tech rush I recommend materialist and fanatic egalitarian and then going masterful crafters as this civic lets your consumer good jobs produce more consumer goods, which is gonna upkeep all your science. They also give a building slot for every three industrial districts, the more research labs, and egalitarians buffing up your consumer good output as well as your science. I also recommend parliamentary system, as this spawns factions at the start of the game, it gives you more faction unity gain, and fanatic egalitarian buffs your unity gain by 50%, so your unity is sorted from your factions, you get science from your jobs and planets and consumer goods, and that's everything you need. You don't have to build any unity. Another one you could pick is technocracy. Your capital buildings will produce some science jobs. You get expertise traits, so you can get more research speed and you will get a cancer position that reduces research upkeep, as well as a research alternative, which is helpful if you're searching for specific techs. Speaking of looking for techs, there is a tech tree that exists in Stellaris. Essentially, the way the tech system works is you draw a tech from a pool of available techs. The way the pool works is that there's different tiers of technologies. You can only get techs from the tiers that you have unlocked or techs that you have unlocked. To move up a tier, you have to research six of the previous tier. So to get to tier two, you need to research six tier one techs. You can generally tell the tiers of the technologies based on the cost as a tier two technology is going to cost more than tier one. There are some techs that need prerequisites before it enters the pool of techs. Unfortunately, there isn't an up-to-date tech tree where you can see all of the different prerequisites, but this 3.4 tech tree kind of does a good job at showing you how it all works. So Empire Size has been a thing for a while now, but what does it do and what effects does it even have? The higher your Empire Size is, the more your techs and traditions will cost. Pre 3.11, tech costs didn't really scale that much, 
with empire size. But now it's been changed so it matches the effect that it has on tradition costs, which is really brutal. Also, as you can see, the cost only starts applying once you go 100 over empire size. So I'm only 143 over 100. This is leading to a 28% cost. This is quite a big deal. However, this is 61 years in and I've built up a huge empire and massive tech cost, so it's not too bad. But if I wasn't keeping up, this could be awful. Bear in mind, I only have three planets and five systems. So how do you manage this inevitable empire size? Well, Unruly used to be the go-to pick. It used to increase empire size, but it didn't really matter too much. However, now I think it does. Unless you're rushing down removing it later on in the game, I wouldn't go for it. Go for a different trait that doesn't affect science as much as this. You can also remove 15% empire size from pops in the harmony tree, which I think is actually pretty good now. You could also just try and keep your empire quite small. If you don't need to expand, you don't need to expand. If you are planning on expanding a lot, you need to make sure that your planets are producing more and more tech and you're just keeping up with the ballooning costs. And remember your governors do reduce empire size from pops and make sure you have a governor employed on at least your sector capital. There's also a few more ways of reducing empire sprawl and we'll just quickly scroll past on the wiki. If you do have a couple of planets you might have won from a war but you don't really care about like this one you can create it a sector then come over to planets and sectors and then turn them into a vassal that gets rid of the empire size from your empire but you can still take some of their production and you could even turn them into a scalarium which could give you some juicy research but we'll get onto that later something a lot of people miss out on is the creator order if you find them are not an empire you should be extremely happy and not sad like i know some people are if you come over and talk to them you can get aided in your research you can then select we would like to push this service and for a cost which scales based on 1000 energy per 60 pops at a max of 5000 energy you will get 5% research speed and then plus 5% research upkeep this is pretty much worth it all the time research speed is research speed it's pretty nice this research upkeep is from the new update in 3.11 but what can you do just build some more consumer goods you also get 20 opinion from this there are also other ways of getting the opinion. Just look around the menus and you can try and get some opinion. But once you're at 50, you can recruit one of their scientists. The scientist costs you 1000 energy and 50 influence. However, you'll get a level five scientist with the creator trait and it unlocks a council position, creator archivist, which will give you assist research efficiency plus 5% and minus 2% research upkeep. I'm not sure if the assist research efficiency does anything now. It might apply to the governors that are governing the planets, but I'm not entirely sure. So to get this creator position on your council, you might have to do a council agenda to reorganize it or add a new position. But here it is, more output and less upkeep per skill level. This is very good. Makes it even better that the only scientist you can put on here is the one you just bought from the create order, which is level five. So you're getting 10% of each. And the creator trait also gives 10% research speed at a 10% research upkeep, more survey speed and an increased chance for draw rare text. Create order is giving you so much research speed and science. I believe this adds up to 25% and this can go up if they level up. If they do die, you can just recruit another scientist. So you may as well send them off to survey or whatever so that they can level up. You might be wondering, what about machines? Surely they deserve something special from here, even though they don't get the council positions. They don't get a leader, but you can actually click, can you share the fundamental principles of knowledge once you get 50 opinion. You can also get aided in research, which is the same across both. This gives the same trait, but to your cognitive node, you don't have to reform your council and you get this trait. This is a must and just I would recommend always doing it. Something I see people get all the time is research agreements. Research agreements do not give this amount of raw science output. However, it's how many texts you can learn of theirs and how many texts of yours they can learn. So for example, there's 11 physics texts we can learn from them. When you agree to this, it will cost you some influence, but it will gain you trust between each other and you get some intel. I would highly recommend research agreements now especially if they have lots of techs that you don't have. And you might be wondering why. So if an empire has a tech you're researching, you will get a 25% bonus to that tech. That is a very, very big number and the single biggest bonus you can get to a technology. As you can see here, we've got five, 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 ten, six. Research agreement, 25%. It is mad. This also comes with no research upkeep like a lot of these buffs do now and just a little bit of influence. Now I'd play this smart. I wouldn't get a research agreement with every single empire in the galaxy, but get one with a very strong economy or science so that you can just benefit the most. And once you eclipse them in technology, just break the research back. Don't let them catch up. It may even be worth to get two if maybe they 
haven't researched the same text, but definitely try and get one. Also increases the draw chance to get text that they have that you don't. So if you're trying to find a cruiser and they have cruisers, it would make cruisers come up a lot quicker. The next tip is to hit that subscribe button. We're quite a bit into this video and we're going to be getting into the more advanced tips. It greatly helps me out and at 50,000 subscribers, I'm going to continuously stream for the Galatron, which is one of the rarest achievements in the game. I hate myself. Now it might be time for espionage to be damn useful. Steel technology is a mission that you can do. It's a level six operation and it costs 40 infiltration level. It'll cost you 100 influence and a bit of energy. But if it's successful, you'll get 30% research progress in a random technology. If the target doesn't have a technology that you don't have, you'll just gain 1000 research in each category instead. If you assign a memory or hacker asset to this, it could give them minus 10% research speed for one year, which is quite funny. And if you have a smooth exit or a asset assigned, you might get an extra 10% bonus to the technology steel. I think that would, might actually be worth doing some espionage purely just for steel technology. And remember to acquire assets when steel technology is on cooldown so that you can get extra bonuses. So the next tip is about making sclariums. This is a special vassalization type aimed at science. Your subject will get more scientific research and a research alternative but they'll have less military capabilities. The Overlord will just get 10% monthly scientific research. If you connect your hyper release to them, your researchers will get 10% more output. At level two, you can also take their scientists, which will have scalarian traits, which can be really powerful. And you can also just take 75% of their raw science. So once they accept the scalarian designation, it will cost you a bunch of influence while they convert. Once that's done, they'll get all the bonuses and they can start leveling up. Just make sure your loyalty is positive otherwise they won't level up. You can build a satellite campus overlord building on them, which will give you and them some science, but you also get access to the Ministry of Science, which will give your empire 3% research speed, but for 3% more upkeep. You can only build one per vassal, but you could just spam a bunch of sclerums for more research speed. It used to be a lot stronger, but if you're going around vassaling, it may be worth just getting a sclerum. So back to federations. To form a science federation, you will need discovery, or if your empire is materialist and for the ability to form federations you will need diplomacy but this could be worth going for as once you make the federation you will get free and automatic research agreements between all federation members which goes back to that research agreement tip and you don't even have to think about it once you start leveling up which can be done much quicker now as if you finish diplomacy you get monthly federation gain plus two which can add up if a lot of your federation members have diplomacy and to get your cohesion going and more xp make sure you always assign a delegate as this will increase your cohesion. At level two, your research agreements will be increased by 5%. You also then get another 5% research speed and a research alternative. At level three, you get another 5% to your research agreements. Rare text unlocked by other Federation members now appear at two times the normal rate. This effect would change a 1% chance to a 2%, which is pretty nice. And you get more diplomatic weight from tech, so your tech rushing can actually make you become the emperor. License production, which gives your research agreements another 5% bonus. So your research agreement will go from 25% to 40%, which is really insane, to be honest. But you are relying on your Federation members, have a lot of techs. If there's a current end game crisis going on, you gain a further 20% research speed. You get an extra envoy as well at level four. And then at level five, you get an extra 5% to your research agreements. And bearing in mind, these are all Federation research agreements. So this wouldn't apply to research agreements with someone not in your Federation. Then a further 20% research speed if there's an ongoing crisis and you get a extra megastructure build capacity. So Federations are pretty strong, especially if you can get it leveled up quickly. Now, the next tip is about the galactic community. There isn't too much that increases tech except for the unchanged knowledge tree. The first one, you get more research station output, which doesn't really matter. Your main tech's gonna come from your planets. Astral study networks give you a further 10% and more diplomatic weight. Advanced Xeno study, more of the same. Ethical guideline refactoring is where you can get a bit more tech. Your researchers get more research output. However, you get a 25% researcher upkeep, which is going to cost you. And then extra dimensional experimentation. You get a planetary decision that consumes row to fund extra dimensional research at advanced research complexes. This is essentially a few more science jobs consuming row, but giving you a bunch of physics research. And it makes your researchers upkeep go to 50% which is really insane. I don't know if this is even worth it. If I've missed anything, let me know in the comments. 
if you're new and want to learn more, check out the comments. We can all teach each other, and I've probably missed something as I am sometimes an idiot. But I hope this helped you and you learned something new. If you enjoyed me just going on about the game's mechanics, then you'll enjoy me playing the game. I'm currently going for every achievement, breaking it in every way to make it as least painful as possible. Spoiler, it's still painful. But you can watch the series here by clicking the playlist.